Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you guys my workflow and how I would implement an advanced feature for a very interesting project that I've been working on. So I want to show you the ideation process, the coding part, and at the end you can keep this project and make it your own onto your resume. Uh, I think it's a pretty interesting project. But first, I really need to show you this keyboard that has been bringing me a lot of fun coding lately. This is the Happy Hacking keyboard, the Hybrid Type S. This is my new daily driver for coding. And there are so many keyboards out there in the market that it kind of becomes hard to choose. But for me, once I read about the Happy Hacking uh, lineup philosophy, it just clicked. This really feels like a professional keyboard when you type. It just feels nice to type on. It's minimalist, it's comfortable, so no bloated keyboards. And it's durable because this is made in Japan. <laughs> I think it says it all. And finally, I've never thought about it, but if you're going to sit down typing eight hours per day, might as well be typing in a fun keyboard and this really changes the whole game for me and of course i'm not a keyboard channel but we are software engineers we type on keyboards every day so i think it's a pretty good investment and from my experience i actually recommend this hybrid type s if you are in the market for a new keyboards so I've been playing with the idea of creating these um, interactive coding exercises that you can basically clone on your machine like a CLI or even on a web browser. Uh, this is kind of the, the code name for now. Uh, and the idea and the goal is to actually help students improve practice after learning from a video course or a book or something like that. So sometimes you get stuck, you don't know where to go from. And here, this is like a, a product to help you fix that. So you can basically load an exercise. For example, this is an example of how we're going to structure it. Uh, for example, there's stage one and stage two, create an HTTP server and then create a, a handler or an, an endpoint to get products. Basically, the job of a dev box is make sure that you have implemented the correct solution. So it's going to run some tests against your solution, make sure they are correct and give you feedback on that. So this kind of creates a loop of where you have to research to implement something. You don't know how to do this. You're going to research. For example, DevBox is going to tell you some resources and then you're going to kind of iterate from there. And this is really where I want to see people. There. I want to see people struggling and then they are going to learn from that. There's a lot of resources online now. There's AI. It's very easy to learn uh, if you are given the right environment. So this is kind of the idea, and uh, this is going to kind of pair with self-made engineer, something like that, just an idea. And so this is how it works behind the scenes, is that you have uh, the student, which is going to fetch exercises uh, for a CLI or for even a web browser UI. And then you send your solution codes. For example, let's take this example here, stage one and stage two. This is going to build, this is going to be to build a, a web application, like a, a server or something like that, an API. You send your solution code to DevBox and DevBox is going to create an isolated environment with Docker for each stage. And then, and the, the reason for an environment with Docker for an isolated environment is that you don't have to have all of these resources on your machine. This is going to be on our servers. And then what's going to happen is actually the piece of code, the missing package that you're going to implement on this video, which is going to be the test runner. So what's going to happen here is that we need to load a test runner into this container, which is going to basically uh, call the stage one and check if the first stage is correct. So we're going to have kind of a, another go file, which is going to curl your HTTP, for example, to see if everything is, is created. And then on stage two, you're going to have another go file, which is going to curl your HTTP server for the slash products endpoint, something like this. And then we're going to have a success status or an error in case you have not implemented stuff correctly. And so this test runner is going to be the missing part of the puzzle that you're going to code on this video. So I already have a gist of how this is going to work. I have made here a diagram with the flow of how everything is going to run. And by the way, you can get access to this code base with this diagram here as well. You can clone it on your machine, build it, whatever. But what I want to implement on this video is to really this part here. So the test runner is going to load the test environment, which is going to basically create the Docker container. It's going to get the, your solution code. It's going to get the solution runner, and then it's going to create the container with these, uh, with these files. So this is basically 
we're going to work with Docker behind the scenes with the CLI, with Go. So this is pretty interesting stuff. And then at the end, very important, we need to implement some way to see if the solution code, if the solution that the student provided is actually correct. And we're going to do this with logs for now. So what this means is that we're going to log the solution and then we're going to compare the output with the correct output that we expect. Now, moving to the code, this is the code base. It's not big. Everything is separated into modules and you can read here more on the readme. Uh, but basically, we're going to be working on this test runner guy. I have already here a very small skeleton on what we actually need to build. Uh, and then here is the entry point, the CLI. And basically, what we have already done is we basically parse the parameter so we're going to receive a course and a solution has a path and then we need to loop over all the stages of the course and run the test against them let me actually show you how a course is actually made so here on the examples we have three courses i've been working on this http server and here we have the course.yaml and this is the course definition file that the container and the solution are going to run against so here the course is basically to create an HTTP server to see if you know how to do this. And this is divided into two stages. So the first one is just creating a server that starts and listens. And this is what the solution tester here on the internal courses that the first code that is going to run against your solution and see if your server starts. So here you can see the max retries and all of that. So I am trying to curl your endpoint to see your uh, server sorry to see if it exists if it works uh, and then i really log at the end uh, if your server works or not so that the solution uh, can be marked as correct or not and then for stage two the idea is to create a product's endpoint and i also do pretty much the same and of course here is the solution of the students this is basically the file that you're going to create on your machine just this file the rest is going to be on a server this is only file the students it's going to send to our server and we're going to run this code against the solution testers so this is what we want to build here on the cli so let's create the render package and then let us um, implement the rest of the functionality so basically this is a structure for the runner. It's going to receive a Docker client. And this is basically a package that I have made, which is a wrapper around the Docker client. And this has basically just utility functions, um, nothing too fancy. And one of the things we need to do is create a container from this image here. So I already have this Docker file and we're gonna load up every solution from that file and then inject the code this is the solution path has a string and this is just another uh, set of dependencies this is the matcher package which basically gets the output of the solution and the expected code and matches to see if it is correct pretty much that so i always create this pattern of creating a struct a constructor and then the methods around this struct so that i can then inject these dependencies here on the main so what we would do is creating this test runner or initializing it so i'm going to import here i'm going to call new and we can just send the solution path it's the only parameter which comes from here the solution path that we already passed from the parameters i also need to handle the error uh, so let me quickly handle here the error so if the error is different than nil what i'm going to do is just exit the program because at these points uh, nothing happened and we can also log that the test runner fails to create. So let's go back here to the constructor. Uh, there's only one thing we need to do is actually convert this solution path to an absolute path because this is how Docker run, runs and, and works. And I think I have already made that before. So let me see um, its file path dot absolute. So we already have this function created from this package, file path. And we just pass in the solution path and this can oops throw an error or not if it does we're just gonna handle it get the absolute path and then pass it here into the solution the docker client we need to initialize this as well so i'm gonna use docker uh, let me actually put this into a variable to make everything cleaner so let's initialize here the docker clients 
Or actually, let me move this down below in case the solution path is wrong. We're not going to create a Docker instance for nothing. So dot new client, it doesn't receive anything. And actually, it returns an error. So I thought this was not going to return an error, but it seems it does. But still, it's nice to have it this after the absolute path because this is more expensive to, to create. I'm going to do the same, handle this error and send the Docker client to the to the struct. Now that we have a, a struct created here, basically the function is here working. Everything is um, without errors. What you need to implement is just this run test function. So this is going to be the biggest workload of this program. And here we need to do very important stuff, which is create the container with the configuration, create the host configuration so that we can actually create a container and then pass the right variables to it. So for example, when you do Docker uh, builds and then you pass in the path, all of that is going to be parameters you're going to need to send. We're going to run our container, which we can do with the runner dot docker dot uh, run container. And these guys are the parameters that we actually need to send. So the configuration and the host configuration. So let's start by working with that. So here is the container configuration and I'm not going to be typing everything, otherwise this video would take more than an hour. I'm going to be typing myself, cutting and then explaining to you what stuff does. And again, you can get the source code, which I'm going to add more comments explaining everything. Uh, but basically, this is the configuration for the base uh, or the base configuration that you're going to send here. This is basically the image, the commands that is on the test file. So everything is defined here on the course file. And then we also need the host configuration. So let me call this host config. And this is going to be a pointer to containers dot host configuration. Then this is going to receive the mounts from the test. So here we actually need to send in as well the solution path. So this is from the runner. There we go. Let's pass in the host configuration as well as the first configuration. And this is going to run the container. So let me actually show you this very quick. This is going to ensure that the image exists. We're going to create the container. So this is all using the Docker CLI behind the scenes. And then we're going to create the containers. And with this, we're going to actually get a code or an ID. Uh, let me actually call this container ID. And this could also return an error. So we need to handle that. If the error is different than nil, I'm just going to return nil and create here a new error called failed to create container and then pass the error for context on a message. Now with this idea, what I want to do is I want to stream these logs because it's with these logs, the container logs that you're going to actually get the final output and then validate this output against the solution code. So let's do this. Uh, and because this is a stream process, the container is running on the background while this is running. We need to actually make a go routine and run everything inside the go routine. So let me uh, start one here and then immediately call it. There we go. And I think that my package with Docker already has this method created. Uh, not this one, it's the stream logs. Yeah, there we go. But send in the context and the container ID that we have just created. I'm going to handle this error in a line. And if there is an error, I'm not going to quit the program. I'm going to just log it. So I'm going to use the logger for this. I'm going to send an error saying error streaming logs. There we go. And now we need to wait for the container to exit. And here is a very important step because if a student tries to create a container that is going to create an infinite loop, I need to be prepared for that so that my server doesn't crash or something like that. So I'm going to create a timeout so that I can send a message to the container after, for example, 10 seconds or 20 seconds. And this is actually configurable from the course stage. So each exercise might have a different timeout. And so I'm going to read that property, send that message to the container and wait for the exit, basically. So here I have just created this timeout with the timeout from the test file from the course configuration. And here I just have a log. What we need to do now is call the Docker CLI with the wait container, uh, just wait container, send in this timeout context. So instead of being the, the current context, I'm just sending a new context with a timeout, the container ID. 
and this guy is going to return an exit code which could also throw an error and I'm just going to copy and paste the error handling from here to here and I'm going to say that for the container. There we go. Okay. Last but not least, we're going to get the logs from the container. So we're going to call again the docker and we're going to get the container logs. We're going to pass our normal context without the timeout, sending the container ID. And let me also validate this error here like this. There we go. I have also added here just a debug log so that I can see the process running in the bits. I'm going to show you guys everything running all together and see if we can actually make this work. And finally, I just need to send these exit codes to the output of the test result. So I think here there's a property called exit code. I'm going to send the exit code as well as the error. I think it's interesting to, to send it. I was sending nil before. And now I think everything is ready because here we are comparing the results, which we are using the log. So here is the output, the expected. And then here we have a match function, which is going to try to match the output with the results uh, from the exercise. So let's run and see if everything is working. So I'm going to do a go build course cuttle or course CTL. I'm taking inspiration from the Kubernetes uh, control here or the cube control. And then I'm going to call the executable with the course example. So I'm going to use the HTTP server. And this is the solution path that is on that folder as well. So basically I have this solution implemented, which should work for both exercises. What I'm going to do is make sure that the second one fails. So I'm going to actually comment the products endpoints. And what I want to see is that the first test is going to run and the second one is going to fail. So let's see. A lot of logs are here. Don't worry about it. So can, as you can see, the first exercise actually succeeded. These are the logs from the container. These guys here without the prefix. So you can see the server starting and then the output of the hello world from the get. And if you scroll down below, you can see here the get product is actually failing because the server does not exist. So if we uncomment this code, this is just a simple get products handler and we run the code again. We hope to see both exercises uh, succeeding. There you go, it has succeeded. This is the log and here are the logs from the container with the solution, uh, with the student solution exercise. So this is pretty much what we wanted to achieve. This project is divided into these small packages, so it's pretty easy to digest. If you want, go ahead, clone it on your machine. Let me know what you create with it. I think it's a very nice idea um, and you can even create a business around it if you want. Uh, I'm just playing around this on my free time, so I don't have that much time to work on this. But let me know if you like this video. This is kind of a, a more advanced project. This is not a web application, nothing like that. This is more of a, a CLI, low-level code that we are working with Docker. We are creating containers, cleaning up containers. And if you want to read more about it, there is actually this resource that I left here. This resource here that I'm taking inspiration. This is how I am learning how to work with Docker with Go. I think it's a pretty interesting project. Give it a try and let me know what you create with it.